Real furs, psychedelic 60s, and Air Max Day? What's going on, YouTube land? I am Chris Catalunya. Yo, if you haven't checked out the Instagram page, follow me at Chris Catalunya with the underscore at the N. If you love the reviews, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video fight the algorithm, especially since 95% of you watching these reviews aren't subscribed. Support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I'm joking, there isn't a sponsor for this video. Anyways, I wanted to do something different. Different, yeah, I'm different. Instead of doing a standard review of Concept's 2022 release of the Nike Air Max 1s, I wanted to do a comparison video of the two, Count em, two models I was able to cop, the Mellows and the Heavy. Keep in mind that these are only two of three designs made out of this collaborative ever. The third being called the Far Outs or the Denim Paisley, which are only releasing on a folks and fan basis at the concept store in Boston. Regardless of the names, all are inspired by the late psychedelic vibes of the late 1960s to the early 1970s, from the paisley bandana designs, the denim jeans, velvet, and the actual cow rawhide. These hits only solidified the fact that they were inspired from Woodstock 1969. Hell, even the flyers from Sneaker Politics was based on the original three-day ticket for Woodstock. For the kids, Woodstock was a giant music festival held on a farm in Bethel, New York. It was an American counterculture movement as, although not directly, it was a protest of the Vietnam War in promoting flower power, peace, not war. And it's crazy because it brought 100,000 concert goers all across the USA to one centralized location. And keep in mind, this is without the advent of the iPhone, the personal computer in every household, and the internet. The method in which I obtained these shoes, the heavies, I drove up from Austin to San Antonio as Sneaker Politics and Concept was hosting a South by Southwest activation. I drove up at 5 a.m., got in line at 6 a.m., lined open at 11 a.m., and it was a dope activation. Crazy that both Derek Curry and Dion Point, owners of both boutiques, respectively made an appearance. Nike Sneakers was there too, filming. Welcome to Austin. Uh, it's no Boston, that's for sure. But <laughs> yo, what up, guys? I'm Derek Curry from Sneaker Politics. We're in Austin from my man Dion Down from Concepts. The Mellows I was lucky to hit early via the Concepts website, but days later, they too made a surprise appearance at South by Southwest, two days after the heavies released locally. So I tripled up. Easy W's. And I must say, I'm glad First Come First Serve is back in full session. Both pairs retailed at $170 USD. Add your tax and VAT based on where you reside. Looking at resale on stock gags or GOAT, since the release, both seem to have dipped in price to attain an average sale between $200 and $270. Of course, this is all based on the size that you need. The box for both are the same. Black cardboard box, flower power Nike swoosh with the different print design spelling out Nike. And then on the sides, you have the concepts in bubble form and then the sizing label up front. Flipping the lid, red tissue paper with more of that flower power theming going on. Under that, white tissue paper that secures the shoe inside. In revealing the kicks, the quality of both pairs of shoes are legit. Right off the rip, I can see myself wearing the heavies a lot more. If I get those purple joints though, those will be it. Now, let's delve into the comparisons. Comparing the lacing system, each model comes with a guitar pick and three sets of laces. The Mellows, you get a white guitar pick that is attached, Concepts on one side, Nike on the other. The default set of laces are a burgundy flat shape poly blend set. The extras, you have that velvet burgundy going on, and then the white poly blend lace, both being of that flat shape. The heavies, you get a silver flashy guitar pick. The default set of laces are a brown flat shape poly blend set. The extras, you have that brown velvety set of laces and then the white set again that we saw on the previous pair, both of that flat shape. Running along the base of the uppers are the guards. The mellows, they sport this solid olive green canvas material where the heavies, it sports a tiger stripe camo that seems to be a ripstop material. Now, 
Both prints are representative of the M65 US military issue jackets that were prevalent and used during the Vietnam War taking place. Taking a look at the vamp and the quarter panels, it's pretty much the same on both pairs as they both employ a tie-dye denim wash vamp and quarter panel. No single pair attains the same pattern makings going on, making each pair unique. Mine are more on the light side, but I've seen pairs where they have darker blues, which I actually prefer. I'm a bit jealous of those pairs, but both actually have stitched in slash star and moons representing the symbols that were printed on the original Woodstock tickets. Also, towards the toe, the shoe employs real cowhide material, making this shoe not vegan. And you know it's real because the insole actually has a sticker stating so. It says the shoe contains real fur. The swooshes found on both the lateral and the medial side of the shoe are done in patch-like form and are stitched to the uppers of the shoe. The laterals are done up in a line color form where the medial has a different design with that flower power going on. The top eyelets of both pair employ this corduroy material where on the heavies you have this light blue going on and then the mellows that purple. The back is a bit different on both. The collar employs this weird pattern spelling out concepts in different colors. Below that is that bandana paisley design that is present. On the heavies, you have that dark navy or that black going on, and then the heavies, that orange, and then that embroidered Nike Air at the heel with those like hanging threads that gives it more of like a homemade feel. Behind the laces is probably the most drastic material differences between the two styles. While the heavies are my favorite overall, I think the tongue on the mellows are better because of that velvet material versus the good quality brown leather that is found on the heavies. Now, there's nothing wrong with this brown quality leather, but just that burgundy velvet on the mellows, it just makes it so much better. But I have zero issues with either. Now, at the top, they're both crowned with a woven label done up in white and the Nike branding and Concepts bubble lettering. The lining on both keep the same color scheme of the respective shoes, though they employ a rib meshing that'll stop short of calling corduroy. It's well padded on the lateral, the medial, and at the ankle of the shoe. Getting inside the shoe, the insole looks like it came straight out of the Yellow Submarine movie, attaining some psychedelic artwork. You have the logos that are at the heel and that white label stating this shoe contains real fur. Looking along the baseline of the shoe, the midsole is this EVA foam that is accompanied with a clear air bubble at the heel. And it's cool because you have paint splatters that match the respective outsoles that overlay those particular features. Even the structures inside the bubbles match the outsoles, in which blown rubber with that typical Air Max 1 traction design make up the outsole. In terms of comfortability, I really do like the feel of Air Max 1s because it employs that air bubble and that EVA midsole. In terms of sizing, I tend to stick with true to size when it comes to Air Max 1s, but you can always go down a half size if it feels a little bit too big. Overall, I do like this collaborative effort between Concepts and Nike on this Air Max 1. And I love that sneaker politics and the culmination of South by Southwest has enabled me to hit on this pair locally. I love that these shoes were inspired by Woodstock and I believe that Nike and Concepts did a much better job in conveying that fact than say Adidas and Shop Nice Kicks on their Ultra Boost pairs. Yeah. <laughs> Again, of the three pairs, I'd rank it in the following order. The far outs, the heavies, over the mellows. Where initially I ranked the mellows over the heavies, but having it in person, I definitely like the heavies a lot more. If you were able to cop these at the retail price, good for you. And I'm also glad that these are not super out of reach on the resale market. It's hovering again between $200 and $270. Definitely attainable. All right, guys, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. What are your thoughts on this collaborative effort? Is this a good pickup, a bad pickup of the two here? Do you think the heavies are better or the mellows are better? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Go ahead and check out my Instagram at Chris Catalunya with an underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. Fight the algorithm. I'd greatly appreciate it. 
Thanks for kicking it with me. I'm Chris Catalunya, and we will check you next time. Cheers. Sigina.